Howdy, Buffalo Bart here, and welcome to Sunday Services with the Reverend Buffalo Bart. And today is pretty much unscripted. And I'm going to leave this available for people to watch now or watch later. If you have questions while the stream is live, please go ahead and ask them either in the public lobby of my Discord channel or in the comments here or the, uh, the chat box here and try to get them answered as I see them. All right, so the project that I have in front of me is just the uh, test platform that I've been working with where we did the, the static meshes and creating static meshes from BSP geometries and from the actual um, default basic um, static meshes, combining them together to actually make something out of it. And we made a quick and easy mud hole. Now, if you want to expand on that, which I think that's one thing we can do, look at right now, or here in just a second, is we've created this little basic mud hole, and right now it's just a divot in the ground, so we'll add some functionality to that. Um, I don't have any sound files that I can put with it right off the bat, but, you know, you could add a sound file whenever you walk into it, you get a sloshing sound, or, you know, the one thing you can add, if it's going to be a, um, a mud effect, is you can actually change the speed at which you're walking while you're in it, and then when you get back out of it. And we'll try to create that. In the previous video, we created the, uh, the rails and gave them a uh, collision and made them to where we can just drop them in as, as meshes. We created a basic house, which also has its own collisions and glass windows here and, and there. Um, and applying textures to it, but creating it as a static mesh so that if we wanted to, we could actually go into our fences and drop down more fence sections. Like a glass section here, which I think we had our height was set at 75. We could actually rotate that to where we can make it connect. So rotate that 90 degrees, and then we can take it and shove it over here. So this is all stuff that we covered in previous videos we're creating our own assets from things that we make so with that you know we just created that and our static mesh now has a collision to it so that's cool um, do a quick lighting build because that annoys the crap out of me so you guys jump on in ask questions let me know what you want to see but I think what I'll do is I'll start off with the mud puddle that we created now we just did it as a cylinder brush and um, applied the material texture to it so that it would look like a divot in the ground. But if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and put some functionality to it. So if you actually walk into that mud puddle, it slows you down while you're in it. So let's actually grab our cylinder brush and the outer radius is set to 100. Let's set it to 150 or let's make it even bigger. 250 and it's going to move it over here just so we can actually walk into it and it affects things. Another way you could actually do that is actually put it into a blueprint by itself so that you can actually um, create the functionality that way. So with that being said, we'll look at it again. When we walk in it, Okay, lovely. So, how can we create some functionality to that? Well, we'd need to go ahead and create it as a blueprint. So, we'll go into it and we'll create a new new folder here called Mud Hole. Then create a blueprint actor class. And we're going to call this mud hole underscore BP. But you guys ask questions. If you've got questions, just shoot them out to me. So now we can actually put the mud hole in our scene here, or we can actually put it into the blueprint itself. But we can create it as um, an effect we can add anywhere. If we wanted to do it in quicksand, if we want to do it in mud, things like that, just to affect the, uh, the walking speed. So we want a collision, 
If we do a box, then it won't work too well if it's round, but we can actually do a capsule collision or a sphere collision. Let's try it as a sphere collision and mud hole. Now, we can size this once we actually drop it into the actual map itself. If we look at it and now drag it into the scene, you can see that it's um, it's there. Now, once we have it there, we can actually use our transform tools and we can actually scale it to fit what we want sometimes. And it's not showing up. So, going by that, it's only looking at the Z axis for some reason, but we can actually do 8 by 8 by 8, and that fills the entire mud hole. Now, it's not going to do anything because we haven't given any functionality to it yet, but now, as soon as we enter into this mud hole, then it will now trigger an effect as soon as we tell it to have an effect. So, we can go into our event graph and let's act. Alright, so we should be back live again. Uh, I don't know why it dropped. GG AT&T. So, okay. So we got our own component begin overlap, casting to our, our player base, and then from there, um, we need to set our walk speed. So where do we get that from? It's going to be from our player. Get max speed character movement. We can try that and see what happens. Yeah, a lot of times um, we don't want to get that. We, we actually want to Okay, can you guys see me now? Um, I don't know why the stream keeps dropping. Um, Yeah, okay. So, I don't know if you guys missed what I was doing there because the stream keeps dropping out for no particular reason. But from on component begin overlap, we're just going to cast to our player character. We're going to get a reference to our character movement. And then we're going to set max walk speed. Now, the current max walk speed is usually set at 600 because of the way it, it, it's configured. But I'm going to just drastically change it to 100, compile and save, and let's test to see what happens here. So now, as we're walking around normal, as soon as we get into the mud, we can slow it down. And that's really drastic here, but we slow down our walking speed. And as soon as we get out of it, we need to tell it to resume. So it, it set it, and it didn't do it in a way that it could actually undo it. So, what we need to do now is the same thing on component begin overlap. We need to come back over here and right click on it and select add event on component end overlap. And essentially, we want to copy the same thing here and paste it in. See, now I'm paranoid. I'm going to keep watching to see if the stream drops or not. Um, so, we're going to copy in the same exact thing that we had above and we're going to set that back to our 600. So now, what happens is when we walk into the mud hole, it sets our max walk speed to 100. Let's actually raise it back up to 200. And then when we exit or we end the overlap, then it's going to set it back to our normal walk speed of 600. So now, if we go in here and we're walking just fine and normal, and all of a sudden, oh no, we get into the mud puddle. It slows us down. Then we get out, we go back to our normal run speed very very simple system for for doing that and pretty cool
Yeah, the storm. Or it just could be the fact that AT&T sucks, and I unfortunately don't have any control over what internet gets used here, so. But that's a very, very simple mud hole effect where you can actually affect your, your player's movement speed. Awesome, right? So let's go ahead and save all. And I don't know if you guys actually saw the stream on the Jumbotron. Um, let's see, I am on test map. With, this was the the demo map where I actually created a Jumbotron, a large screen TV. And you go into it, what happens is it actually then starts streaming a YouTube video. So this is an actual YouTube video that's being fed in through a web browser interface. So you can actually create a TV effect inside your, your levels. Howdy, beautiful bird here. Howdy, beautiful bird here. Mm -hmm. And welcome. And so yeah, I, I thought that was pretty cool too, to be able to have a um, web browser you can actually put into the game. There is a way you can actually set up your um, web browser like this and the way that it's operating is off of a widget. And I explain how to do it all in, in, in another video that's on, on my channel. But you can actually create it as a usable widget you can put into the scene and actually get your mouse cursor out that you can actually start interacting with and using like slider bars, buttons, changing options could actually be in a regular interface inside the widget. But yeah, going back to this one, showed you guys in a, uh, another video on how to set up a floating stair trick to where you could actually make stairs that actually float. There's nothing underneath them, so it looks like it's just the stair platforms going up. That was a pretty cool, easy trick to do. I think what I'm going to do for right now is I'm I'm going to connect this platform over here to those stairs just so we can have something to, to walk on. So I'm going to click on geometries, create a box. Now, you notice that the box came out all gray and stuff like this. And, I, and I've covered this many fucking AT&T. Seriously. Okay. Why it dropped, I don't know, again, but Sunday services don't usually last but about 30 minutes to an hour. It's just based on how many people are watching and how many questions I get. So, I apologize for the stream dropping so much. Um, I don't know what's going on with that. Um, it's out of my control. Alright, so just created this BSP geometry and I want to match it to the height of everything else. When you're editing BSP geometries in a standard method, do not use these transforms. Try not to use them at all. Um, you're just going to want to do, um, like, if you want to change the Z height, instead of using this right here for scaling it up and down, do it manually. And I'm going to set that to 50, which is the thickness that I'm using for everything else. If I look at the height of this platform right here, it was set to zeros because I didn't create that one but we want it to match perfectly and that's actually not bad so if I want to stretch it this way instead of manually using transforms I'm actually going to go ahead and change the x-axis and y-axis separately so let's try 800 in fact let me do a vertical way this way so I'm going to put it back to 200 and we'll try a thousand this way. Now we can use our movement transforms but we don't want to use the other transforms just because they're actually going to distort the materials if we do it that way. And yes I could be exact if I wanted to but we're just going to eyeball it for this video. That's good. And then come back in do the same thing grab another box. We'll do zero it out, set it to 50, bring it over. We need to fill that distance, which we can see is going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So that's 500. So if I set my Y to 500, it should be the correct distance to match that gap. These 
gray grids here right here the big grid is actually a 100 by 100 unit same thing when you're looking at BSB geometries without the actual material on it it's going to be 100 by 100 for the main body of it so now we're just connecting this in now of course these stairs weren't tall enough to actually get us to the rooftop but yeah whatever so what would you guys like to see we set up functionality for a mud hole so that whenever you walk into it it slows you down when you get back out of it it stops now the way it worked there was a circle on it so it'll still work inside there how to load in terrain are you wanting to use some real world terrain or do you want to just create your own so you have something besides just floating blocks because if you want to do a, a normal terrain where you can start sculpting on it then I'll close my mud hole blueprint go to file I'm going to create a new level make it default and I'm going to save the one I was working on now what I'll do is I'll go in here Alright, sorry about that. I don't know what's going on with the stream. Um, it's not under my control. This never happens, so this is just a kind of annoying thing. So yeah, whenever you're creating it under your Manage tab, if you go 2 in the first box, it's going to be in the x-axis of how long your map is. And if you want to change the y-axis, it's the second block here. Set that 2 as well. So we've got now a 2x2. Two or I can come back over and change it to four tab four and then if we look at it from here we need to first off make sure that our our player is not falling through the floor but I'm gonna go ahead and hit create and that's gonna create the terrain and then I'm actually gonna go back to our regular mode grab my player and drag him up so he's not sticking to the ground if it's not going to work, it's going to say bad size right there. So just bring it up until that goes away. And then when you hit play, you can see we have this lovely terrain. Now, the next thing we need to do, since we're playing, we don't have a character. We need to make sure that we go to our world settings, change our game mode override, and set it to third person game mode. And now when we hit play, we're actually in the map. You can see we got shadows and everything's there. I always recommend before you actually put in your you paint your terrain, you actually start building your terrain first because you can use these um, the grids. And I'm sorry for okay. This is getting really really annoying. I apologize for the continual drops. Um, this is just sad. It just keeps dropping out. But I'm gonna go ahead and explain again. Um, I want to build the lighting quality and get rid of that spherical thing because it has a highlighted area and for construction I just don't like it I've never used it it has a purpose but don't care at the point so um, you can go ahead and, and build the lighting only while I'm discussing this but also you don't want to paint your terrain until you've created the majority of your terrain so you know um, exactly where you're gonna place a, a plateau or if you want houses or you want something else and like we've already made our, our pre-made building that we can actually drop into the map you can pre-plan things ahead of time so we know that our character is facing this direction again if we go back into the map you see I have the mouse cursor bug I don't know if any of you guys have this problem when you hit play in your standalone or in your, your editor window you have a mouse cursor and then you have to left click on there so that you can then have control of your character to move around it is an annoying bug because whenever I go into play I'm going to play in selected viewport and I do that because I want to rapidly get in and start working and I always have to stop click and then I can move so to the quick fix to get a walk around is you can go on blueprints open level blueprints and then <sighs> you 
yeah, I don't know if that's the internet doing it or if it's a bug with OBS Studios that needs to be fixed or something. I don't know what's going on with the, the, the drops. But again, we're actually in our level blueprint. So I had a sequence node in so that if I want to, I can add in background sound and I'll show you that while I got this, this blueprint open. But I want to definitely come in here and I want to set input mode to game mode only. And then from there, we need to get um, get player controller. So we have that reference taken care of. And we want to set show mouse cursor to false. We don't want that box checked. Yes, there is. Um, whenever you're setting up an animation montage, you can actually put that in as, as part of the track so it, it plays the sound um, emitters and all kind of stuff like that too. Um, you can also set up attenuation levels so that if you're within a certain range you can hear it but if you're not you won't. Let me compile and save and we're gonna call this our train map um, just for whatever but we can go in here and now again I'm not going to paint the terrain yet but I want to add some sound to it because if we go in here and play there's nothing it's pure silence and it's really bland so what I wanted to do real quick um, yeah it, it, it's either with YouTube or with OBS or my internet seems to be fine it's not my internet's not dropping out so it's just something with that I don't know if I just and I just opened up OBS right before doing the stream so I don't know what's going on um, in fact I probably will end up doing a, a restart of the computer here after I get done with the stream so that um, you know potential bugs we can get rid of in the starter content you go to your audio folder you have a starter background cue and again if you play on your map there's no sound there's nothing so it can be a little boring so if you while well, I've got that um, the blueprint open level blueprint while I've got that open what I want to do is play sound at location now this is a looping sound so it's not necessary to add a delay to it and then reloop it now, if you have your starter background cue selected, and now when you go back in here, all you have to do is click on the arrow and it feeds it in. But if it was a sound file that was, say, 15 seconds long, then what you can do is put in a delay and then feed in the time of the length of the actual uh, file. In this case, it's 10,000 seconds long, don't think you're going to be in this map long enough for it to not loop but it is going to loop anyway but as a fail safe you do 10,000 in one second and then loop it back over or however long your your actual background loop is if it's not a loop and you want to make it loop the way you can do that is just by looping back from the end of your delay to here so this tells it to start playing the sound and then it's going to start counting down a clock and then there you go it'll restart it after that clock is over so now if it compile and save and close that hopefully you guys you can hear it you have the sound of wind blowing you'll hear some birds chirping things like that that's how we can add a little bit of sound to the you know passive sound in the background and if it's too loud or not loud enough you can go back to your your level blueprint click the arrow and you can actually choose a, a, a attenuation setting that you created concurrency that you've already set up owning actor so if only you want to hear it and nobody else needs to you can assign it to a specific actor or whatever you can set your volume here a pitch modifier start time you can do all that stuff I'm just gonna for the sake of it I'm gonna do 0 0.7 so I turn it down by 30% and compile and save. So now when we go into our map, no more mouse cursor bug and
the sound is there, yay. And since we created our static mesh geometries for our houses, we only did one, we drag it into the scene, scale it up, or not scale it up, but pick it up so that we can place it on the ground. Now we have a house that we can actually put in the ground. I'm actually going to go take a look at the height of it. Got to take care of the daughter, man. So yeah, just that easily, once we've created our prefabbed houses, we can just grab them and start popping them into the map wherever we want to. Any gap between buildings, I always try to leave about 200. That way you have some walking room. And I can grab another one, throw it in here. And again, want to have about 200 walking space in between. And if we're trying to establish a town, as we're plopping buildings down, control C, control V, and then drag that, rotate it, 180, and then drag it across over here. What I'll do is I'll, to make them line up symmetrically for now, which you don't have to do, but just grab it that way. You can manually do it or you can go in and select the actual coordinates and do stuff like that but we're just making a quick town so we'll we'll manually do things and that should be wide enough for the streets so now we go into our map see the back of the building we can walk in there we have collision on our buildings so we can't walk through the walls and yes we missed a texture so but yeah that's just something you can fix as you're you're going through but now, just that quick, we've popped down six buildings and we've got our own town. And for doing your terrain, if you want to start building your terrain, you can do that now. And to edit your terrain, just come into your landscape, sculpt, sculpt tool. And you can adjust your tool size to whatever you want. Um, and tool strength and that kind of stuff. I like to start off with if I'm going to put like a hill in the background, I will get about the height that I want. I'll come back over to my sculpt tool, change it to a flatten tool, and now I can create a flat spot to work with. So it'll just grab from where you start painting, and as long as you keep the mouse button held down, it will keep painting that terrain up to that new height. And this is how you can create um, a ridge line to help contain your players inside so they don't accidentally fall out of the map. And you can find creative ways of doing that as well. You can actually also come over here and adjust your camera speed. Move up to about 6 so I can move a little bit faster. And then just just keep painting across. So you can create this little valley area so your players are contained. I've done this and created false tunnels and stuff like that. It looked like you can actually... Actually, one of them was a train that would actually take you into a, the tunnel. And then whenever the train actually got to a certain part of the tunnel, instead of it smashing you against the wall, it actually just um, teleported you to the next map. So yeah, you can do this as a starter just to kind of get the basis of your terrain set up. And say if you want to come over and create a pond effect, then you could do the same thing with your sculpt tool, but you hold down the shift key and it actually goes down instead of up. And I can go back with my flatten tool, find about the depth that I want, and do that. And then to make sure you can get in and out of it, you can go to your smoothing tool. And let's actually make the brush size a little bit smaller. And we'll just smooth the edges out. So now you can walk in and out of it. So when you place your water texture, if you have one, you can place it down right there. If you don't have a water texture and you want to create one, let's save current. Let's do a save all. Now if we walk over here, we can see that we have the, the area for our pond. 
We can make it as big as we want to, but there's no actual water in there. To make the water usable, you're going to have to create some other balance and stuff. But for cosmetic wise, if you want to create a, um, man, let's just call this water. Just create a, um, a new blueprint actor. We'll call this pond water. We'll go in here and I would say you add a component of a plane. You're going to do a lot more than this to make the water actually to where you can float and swim and that kind of stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and resize this plane up. Um, unfortunately, with a plane, when you start resizing it, it can be a problem with stretching and tearing. But let's actually hold off and let's make it 10 by 10 by one because it doesn't matter on your Z because it's a flat piece anyway it's one dimensional compile and save now if we drag that into the map and I'm going to turn my camera speed back down to four which is the default speed of the camera is four so we drag that into the map it's very very bland and plain map right now you can drag that in there and the actual details panel you can actually change of the blueprint the element you can make it water lake compile save now it may not look right because we're going to be doing a lot of stretching and tearing and everything else actually resize it in here and we'll go with 50 by 50 by 50 the Z is not going to matter compile and save and now if we look at it it's a little bit bigger we need to make it a little bit larger so it fits our, our lake a little bit better so we'll do 55 by 55 Yeah, still needs to be bigger. It's okay if it's bigger and it can overlap underneath the ground. So I'm just going to do 75 by 75 to make sure that I'm not going to have a problem with it. So now if we go into the level and we look over, we can actually see we have water. Now if you want to make the water actually work, you're going to need swim animations and things like that. Now right now our water seems to be an ice pond. We can actually walk on it. So we can change our collision if we want to. Uh, we can actually change the um, the water to ocean. Do our collision presets and set that to no collision. Compile, save. And now when we look at it, we can actually see the water and we'll be able to walk through it. No, we'll drown. So if you want to add um, post-processing effects to make it look like you're underwater, and then essentially where you're in water, you'll have to create a bunch of other effects. And it's not hard. It just takes a little bit more time to actually get all that set up. So I mean, you can come over here, and when you create that effect, you'll have something in your details panel that says that it is water and is a swimmable area and that kind of stuff. So if I added a um, another component which would be it's not a physics it is um, we got a floating pond movement which I really haven't tried that. It's it simply just turns off the um, the gravity effect. Physics constraint, physics handler. Yeah, I've never been a <laughs> strong one on setting up the water. But you got your post process. You can set that up. 
that'll help you with actually creating the the water effect inside the water the visual effects um, this is where you can add a, a widget or widget interaction which are always fun to play with but yeah particle systems there's so many things you can add into a blueprint that if you don't do anything but just screwing around with characters you really don't notice anything um, I mean even if I just add in a box collision but look at that box I can add effects to that as well so once I walk into it you can turn off gravity you see I've got it right there so go to our details panel and and size it up to 75 by 75 it's not going to cover the whole thing so let's actually 80 by 80 and that's not enough All right, well, that's good enough to get the uh, the point across. So we can set it to just about where the level of the water is so that when you walk into it, it'll have an effect. If we want to, then um, we can do things like in physics, the constraints and all these other stuff. Mode, you can set that as customs or whatever you want to do with that. Um, yeah, there's so many different things you can do. Just you got to experiment with these things. I'm actually, for the heck of it, going to just be dumb and turn off enable gravity. This is not going to be perfect. So if we walk over here, as soon as we step in the water, it should do some weird junk. And it didn't, but oh well. But yeah, you can experiment with it. There's post-processing. There's other things you can do to actually... And I'm actually going to get rid of that. No, stream is not complete. I don't know what's going on with YouTube or, or whatever's going on with that. So, yeah, set up your cosmetic stuff You know, later. Set up the functionality of your map. Set up your, your pre-made stuff like your your town element um, if you want to start adding in foliage that's a pretty you want to save that for later always want to take your time and actually get everything functional first and then worry about um, trying to take care of all the pretty stuff it's too easy to get wrapped up in making pretty things and because there's so many little details you can add to a map that actually say that it's a, a real environment that if you spend all that time working on it right now, you're just going to drive yourself batty. You'll waste time in the wrong direction. You always want to take your, your main focus as being functional first, pretty second. Just like me. I'm functional, but I haven't got to the pretty part yet. So it's going to tell me that I have some app issues because, well, you know, I have issues to begin with. I haven't set up a um, uh, the lighting just yet for this, but again, not really worried about it all that much. Um, our stairwell that we did earlier, if I go to our stairs and drag in the stairs, see if I put it right here, I want to bring it up to where not only is it at ground level, but we want to go ahead and bring it up so that it looks like it could be the first step, but I don't know. Let's leave it right there on the ground. See, since it didn't go up all the way, we could do... When we created our stairs, we didn't create it for this building. Um, did you guys want to see really quickly on how to do these uh, stairs to make a, a floating stairwell like that? Leave that up to you guys. Because if you tried to resize it now... It's going to stretch things and may not look just right. So you have to be really careful when you're stretching things with this. Turn off snapping and if 
If I do this wrong, then it's going to make the stairs to where I can't even go up them. And to get to the correct height and whatnot, it's just not going to look right. So I'm going to leave it at 1, 1, and 1. But you could also just create an, another set of stairs. But I know that it's going to get us high enough to where we can actually jump onto the rooftop. If I wanted to make the stairs specifically for this one, then... It really, really is starting to get annoying that it keeps dropping every couple of minutes. Like I said, I wish there was something that I could do to fix this problem, but I don't know what's going on. So instead of using our stairs that don't go all the way up, how? Oh, this is getting annoying. Okay, so all I did was I dropped a linear stair into the map. And I got it into position. Well, we're going to have to re reset the position here as we go. Um, after we've created our, our geometry linear stairs, then I want to make my adjustments here. I can actually make my stair length longer if I want to, if I want to set this to 100. But I'm going to leave it at 30, which is the default. We can actually make it 40 to be a little bit larger. The number of steps, we can change that to 14 or 16 or however many we need. We can just keep adding to that. We can slide it with this, but as you see, once we get to the height, it's actually not going to be right. At 20 is too tall and 19 is too short. So to kind of make up for that, we can actually adjust the stair height. Our stair height is 20. Let's try 21. Uh, it's a little bit too much. So we could actually, if we wanted to, again, adjust the stairs down to 18. Not 158, but 18. And adjust our stair height to 22. Whenever it's getting that close to being correct, then I would say as you're you're done with it, just adjust your Z height. But to get the point across of what we're trying to do here to create this as a um, a functional system, I'm going to go ahead and bring in a box geometry. Now again. No, stream is not complete. You keep dropping my shit, YouTube. And I'm about to lose my shit over this. So, I'm going to start from scratch. And hopefully it'll stay streaming long enough. And like I said, I don't know what's going on with this. I, I'll have to look into it in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and select a material. I'm going to go ahead and select my stairs. And then let's try it at 18 steps with a stair length of 40 and a stair step height of 22. So that's going to get me to that point. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you how I, I make it to where it looks like a floating step system is to get rid of the rest of this junk, which looks like crap anyway, I'm going to go ahead and control C and control V, create a new version of it. I'm going to slide it over a little so that um, I can line up the stairs so as it comes down here, down here, like that, and then I want to change that to subtractive. And there we go. The next thing you want to do is reduce your number of steps by one. And there you go. You got a platform. Now, I want to put a little platform up here. What I'll do is I will go ahead and add a BSP geometry box. We're going to leave it at 200 by 200. We're going to set the um, Z height to... 40, which I believe was the height of my steps, or the 
how big they were and we just want to make this as big as that was so that it fills up from the front of the house which we need to go ahead and select both of these so we can move them together so if we want a unified system for our town to have steps that go up and then a um, a platform and then if you want to really get into it you definitely want to add some railings and that kind of stuff in there but this is just showcasing how I created my my step system I'm going to try setting my x-axis um, that's what I do these streams for if you gotta ask for for these things and I cover them as I can try 250 and we need to change the um, height is too thick try 30 And so, nope, we're going to have to try 20 for our Z height. We want to try to match our, our stairs so it looks more natural. Try 22. It's probably going to be it. Nope. Hell. Nope, that's too much. So we want to go to about... Nope, we're... We were about right before, about 22. So now we can size that up. Get it to match our platform. We want to match our stairs and not our house. Because we're going to combine this quickly into a, a BSP geometry. And, and turn both of them into a actual um, static mesh. So let's get our... our um, our size right here so I'm going to go ahead and expand that a little bit more in the X axis to to 60 it'll take some experimenting but the more you get it right now the easier it's going to be to line things up later Let's try going too far at 280 which actually looks pretty good and we want to get our Y axis. So what I'm going to do is grab the box brush, both stairs, and let's try setting it to zero on that axis. And then that way it's going to line them all together. Except for the fact that no. Because the box brush has to be different. It's set on the middle. These guys are set to a corner. You can actually split the difference. With snapping turned off, I can actually line it up a little bit easier. You can use that stupid mathematic stuff is the best way to do it. But this is good enough for now. I'm going to go ahead and select all three of these. I'm not going to put the railings on, that kind of stuff right now, because that would take even more time. And, then, you know, I don't want to extend this past one hour, even though it's not my fault that it kept dropping out. But I'm going to select all three of my BSP geometries that I've got here. And I'm actually going to make this into a static mesh. Since these are BSPs, the function is right here, create static mesh. Select my folder. And I'm going to go call this roof underscore stairs and create static mesh. Now it's going to convert that one into a static mesh and I can go ahead and save all. Now if I want to I can go ahead and create that anywhere I want. And I can actually then go ahead and size it make sure everything's right and just that easy we just created our own static mesh to add into the map you'll actually want to spend a little bit more time with it than unlike YouTube you want to make your life easier by creating these static meshes to fit a specific need 
So if you're wanting to, to be able to drag and drop things, quickly put them into your map, you want a static mesh that you don't have that would be a simple set of stairs or, or whatever. You know, it's just that easy to create your own and put them wherever you want to in the map. Oh, I know, this stupid internet is going to piss me off royally. So I can grab both of these, since I like the spacing on them. Control c Control v Bang, just drop them right over here. And like I said, the whole point of all this is so that we can make life easier in general. Control c Control v uh, Making life easy is a good thing. So now, also, you want to go ahead and start organizing your map. Right click on your map name, create a folder, map, shit. I'm going to grab my fog, landscape, landscape, gizmo, light source, player start, sky sphere, skylight. Grab all this map shit and throw it in the map shit folder. And then I want to go ahead and put my pond water in there. Not bong water, pond water. And then I want to create another folder for houses. And I can grab all this stuff, throw them in there as well. So now I have everything neat and clean and organized. And I can actually click on that, open up what I need to open up, when I need to open it up. And let's go ahead and hit play. And now we have our town with roof access. Except we could have put rails on. Oh no, there's no collision. Whatever will we do? Well, we go into our roof stairs. And let's try setting our collision here with a 26 dope. Yep, that's not going to work. So if you accidentally put the wrong collision on, go back to collision and delete selected collision. And then try a different one. Hmm. Nope, that's not going to work. I know what I'm going to end up having to do, and again, I try to avoid it whenever I can because you don't want to have too many facets in there. Um, normally, on um, most objects, you know, the 26 will work, um, if, but in this case, it's just drawing an overall, and that's just not going to work. And if you can't find one that actually works for you, Worst case scenario is you come over here to your material slot or LOD, your details panel, and you scroll down to where you have your collision. It's already set to block all, even though it's not blocking anything. Just select use complex collision as simple. Hit save and bang. So now if we go into our map, we've just added collision to our new custom static mesh. So now we can walk up and down our stairs and get to our roof. Yay. Awesome, right? We even have some background sound. We got some terrain loosely sculptured. We got a pond off in the background. An instant town that only took us a couple seconds to throw together. Um, so you can spend some time making the water functional. Um, you can worry about doing lighting and stuff like that. What I've noticed with these is it typically, which I'm going to go ahead and do a lighting build, and the more stuff you add into your scene, the longer it's going to take to do your, your lighting builds. Um, number of actors in this map is 20. So it's relatively quick for me to be able to process my lighting, especially if I'm doing a lighting-only build. But I'm going to tell you what, when you've got six, seven, eight thousand actors in your map. Yeah. The lighting takes a little bit longer to do. So. Yes. Um, I don't care about the errors that we've found here. So Now if we walk into our town, we've got nice tinted glass windows. We walk inside and the lighting is awkward. That's just the way that I created this particular one. It was done in a hurry. It wasn't done correctly. As you can see, I, I forgot to assign a texture. But our, our roof stairs that we did here, what if we decided we don't like 
that particular texture. I can actually come over here and the material that I use to create it with, I can change that to oak. And because I didn't rotate the textures around, I'm kind of stuck with it in this way. So now if I hit save, go back into the map and look around, oh, they're a different color. They're going to come out black. And that's where you're going to run into some problems when you start changing some of your textures. It doesn't like when you change them. They're going to show up black, and you're going to have to make some revisions to it. So there's good and bad to everything. But once you make it, I would say leave it, build it the way you want it, get it right the first time. Worst case scenario, just remake it if you have to. You know, it's not like it's a huge deal to remake. So now this needs to hurry up and finish. Because we can't do anything until it finishes. Yes, yes. So now if we look at it in the map, the texture is really, really dark. It's like totally black, but you can see some reflections on it, and it's just not right. So where it can start being problematic is um, if you look at your actual item, go to your roof stairs, if I select all of them so get it all together, you can see it has that texture on there, but you have to rebake the materials. If you, be, you go back to, to baking that way, then this is where you can actually just screw it up. And I'm not going to do it right now because it creates a whole new material and I'm just going to cancel out of all of them. Because I'm going to try to do it for each individual one of them. And if I go back to my pine, it's not going to save it that way. I would have to go back in here and manually select it back in here. When I go back into my map, my textures are ruined. So we ended up having to delete all of them. Oh joy, yeah. So I would say don't mess with the textures on, on your custom static meshes while they're in the map because you'll end up causing more problems than it's worth. So pick out how you want it to look when you're actually creating the static mesh. That way you don't have the issues. So it almost looks like I'm creating a, a small western town here. This is also something you could have actually built into your house when you're creating the house itself so that again it's all drag and drop so anything you can do to speed up the process the better so you can then place the house you can build multiple different house styles I would say you know build four or five different styles Build 20 different styles, who cares? Build whatever you need to populate your town with. Oh, welcome back, Storm. Yeah, I just kind of, we're having a lot of issues here. Uh, not sure what's actually causing the problem, but the stream keeps dropping at random for no particular reason. Don't know what's going on or why. But I just quickly showed how to, to populate a map. Now, yeah, I didn't, didn't put these in right, but oh well. Um, not the point. Uh, if you guys want later on in another uh, video, since I don't want to keep going past the hour mark, which, which we are now, but um, importing terrain, real world terrain, there's an easy way to do it. A lot of people have all these theories, well, you can do this, you can do that, and, well, I have a pretty simple way of actually importing terrain, where essentially you can get into um, this one website, grab the information you need, and pretty much within 10 minutes of deciding where you want your terrain, 
how big you want your terrain, um, you can be walking on that terrain within 10 minutes inside of Unreal Engine 4, going from website to uh, playing on that map in about 10 minutes time. It is just that easy. Um, so I'll, I'll probably get into that into another video and show you guys how to do that. And then um, it looks like it'll be a short video because it, it only takes about 10 minutes. And then you can apply your, your landscape materials and you're good to go. So um, I will grab a link. So whenever I actually do that video, I'll put a link in the uh, description so that you actually can go directly to that website, do the same thing that I'm doing. Um, in fact, let me um, grab a, that URL really quickly. Let's see. And I will link it. But what it is is um, it's a website that's like a, a USGS geological survey map. It was called Terrain Party. And let's drag that in here. All right. So you look at the website. I don't know why it keeps defaulting to this location. It was not even close to where I want to be. So grab a little blue square and I move my blue square to wherever I want to go. Let's say if I want to go to I don't know, somewhere where it's got a lot of hills. Let's go to Utah. Got New Mexico. Drag it over here to Utah. We can start scrolling in find a particular area that we want to go to but this square is we can actually grab that information from that square we can essentially save it to our hard drive and then import it as a height map directly into Unreal Engine 4 and create that as an actual playable zone you can actually upsize it or downsize it recommend to start off with I would go to about 10 and start from there, experiment with it a little bit. Like I said, I'm not going to get carried away on this, but essentially you find where you want to go. Now I'm zooming in as far as I can go here, but you can also go to topographic imagery or you can go to um, shaded relief, which I like shaded relief. So you can actually, if you're looking for a specific type of terrain, like this area right here. If I want that, I can just place my square over the top of it. And then from there, you've got the, the cloud button right here, which is export. Click on that. I'm going to call this area Ravine. Click OK. Takes a few seconds. It will go through the process converting that into a height map and it'll offer it up to you as a download. So let's see how long this takes here. For this 10 kilometer by 10 kilometer square area. There we go. Pops up and you want to save file. Tell it where you want it to go. I'm just going to throw it in the new shit. New folder and Ravine Terrain. I'm just going to leave it called that. Hit save. So now you can actually go into your hard drive and select it and it actually saves it as a zip file. You right click on that zip file which and then extract to whatever and there it is. You've got five different height maps and a readme file to go along with it. So you can actually use these um, like the 10M 
or height map merged or whatever you can pick whichever height map you want to use and import that into your actual map and with that you can actually um, covering up way too many windows here yeah so with that you can actually select the terrain and I don't need the website anymore and when you go to we want to go ahead and save everything here so we don't lose anything save all save current I'm not gonna worry about doing the lighting do new level default All right, I'm going to quickly do this, and I'm going to get off the stream because I'm getting pissed off that um, the stream keeps dropping. I, I'm just going to restart everything. So you create a new map. You come into Import from File. You select here, and then you want to go to your uh, folder, wherever you told to uh, download to. Put in the new shit, a new folder, Ravine, and pick one open and there we have terrain it's all wireframe right now because we haven't told it to um, fit to data or import so let's go ahead and import well there it is I mean we just we just did that uh, yeah, 324 items need to be rebuilt. I'm going to get rid of my sphere. I am getting so damn pissed off with this shit. So yeah, I just... In a couple seconds time, I went to the website, picked out the terrain that I wanted, and then I went ahead and saved it to my hard drive with the cloud button as a, a, a zip file, opened it up, import it into the map just like we showed and then I'm just gonna grab another player start because the other one was just gonna be too difficult to move around I'm gonna set my game mode override to third person game mode and hit play within what five minutes not even five minutes that's not even five minutes with the stream dropping twice while doing this we're able to come in here and, and import real-world terrain directly into Unreal Engine 4 and this huge ass map just that easy so we can actually interact with it we're actually walking on terrain that we just looked at on the map in just a couple minutes it'll take longer to actually do a lighting build than it will to actually <laughs> get the whole process completed but what you'd want to do is speed up your map your camera speed and say maybe six go around you're gonna to want to do a lighting build it'll be a pain in the ass but you're gonna to want to look for areas that are gonna be problems tearing things of that nature and just kind of smooth them a little bit so you have a bit more walkable terrain this wasn't a really good example of terrain that I could actually walk on but yeah you know, it was just a prime example of something that was exaggerated terrain wise so before this stupid stream drops again uh, I will leave it at that. I will actually go ahead and leave a link in the description for the uh, the terrain. I can actually go ahead and do that now. And it was just terrain party is, is all it was. That's the link. Just go to that link, open up the map, select the area you want to go to, and from there just hit the cloud button save it to your hard drive unzip it go in there create a new map hit the landscape button you know it was just that easy I mean it's harder to explain than it is to actually do it so I'm gonna go ahead and save all and we're just gonna call this our ravine and I'm going to leave the video at this because it keeps dropping. I'm going to restart everything, and hopefully that'll solve some of the issues. And if you guys want me to later on, I'll do another stream. But thanks for watching. This time, it's actually me closing the stream down and not some other BS problem. 
So drop by my Discord channel. I'll answer more questions there in the uh, the public lobby. Um, and I've also got a questions and answers section. You can hop in there and post questions there, preferably. So, guys, thanks for watching, and thanks for sticking around with all these continuous drops. And we'll see you on Discord.